we divide the mass onto the right side here and then multiply by dt, everything on the right, then we have this equation that uh, we have uh, dv equals t minus d minus w sine gamma divided by the mass and uh, <clears throat> we multiply all of this by dt. Now we can put integral signs on both sides and here we start from the initial velocity, I'll call it v0, to the final velocity, vf. And uh, here we start from the initial time, t0, to the final time. On the left we have this integral we can do as vf uh, minus v0, which is called delta v. And of course delta is a Greek letter. Uh, this is the capital delta. Later on, we may use lowercase delta, which is written like this. And I'll always uh, tell you what these Greek letters are as we encounter them so that you'll know how to pronounce them and how to write them. <clears throat> All right, so taking our equation two, we have the desired velocity is the uh, integral of thrust over mass dt. This is what the propulsion system is providing by thrusting. <coughs> and uh, we're assuming our initial velocity was zero, by the way. And then we subtract uh, this term, which is essentially the drag losses, and we subtract this term, which is called the gravity loss. Notice that if you take w over mass, this is in fact the gravity at a particular altitude, local uh, acceleration of gravity, which uh, go, becomes smaller as you go up to higher altitudes. So we have the velocity here on the left that the propulsion system has to deliver, and we have the drag and the gravity uh, losses that we have to overcome. So these are losses that we have to, we have to beef up the propellant system, the propulsion system, in order to make up for what we lose from these terms. And so if we rearrange our equation, we get the propulsion delta v in terms of what we desire, that is to get the orbit, the orbit we want, and then the fact that we have to make up for drag and for gravity losses. And so you might wonder, you know, is this the whole story? And the answer is no. We have simplified tremendously, but we got some of the most important effects in there. There are many other considerations, depending on how accurate you want to model the problem or how accurate you need to model it. And uh, this is also versus how simple, you know. So we have these competing things, right? How accurate, and then we have, well, how simple do you want it to be? And of course, if it's real simple, then it's not going to be as accurate. So some things that I've ignored. Uh, in this analysis is what about the effect of the Earth's rotation? We know that the Earth is rotating and uh, at the uh, equator it's about a thousand miles an hour that you uh, would gain if you traveled east. Um, we have also steering losses. We assumed that the rocket was always pointing along the current velocity vector but in fact uh, in order to steer the spacecraft or launch vehicle into orbit you have to point in a different direction than the velocity and therefore you're losing some of your delta v to that. Uh, also you could have uh, misalignments in the thruster, the way it's mounted on the vehicle. You may have some out of plane uh, effects which could be errors or also some uh, plane changes that you're intending to do uh, if you're going to uh, an orbit that's uh, inclined differently than it would be if you just stayed in the plane. You have the ambient pressure effect as a rocket goes up into orbit. Um, the atmospheric uh, density drops off and uh, uh, rocket uh, propulsion systems uh, become more efficient uh, when the ambient pressure drops off. That means that they're less efficient when you're on the ground at sea level, say. All right, now let's take an example from the historic Saturn V. And uh, this comes out of uh, the uh, SPAD book, uh, and that um, <coughs> is the Space Propulsion. Let me write this down for you. Ant 
and analysis. I'm sorry, space propulsion analysis. and design. <clears throat> and that's by three authors, Humble, Henry, and Larson. Highly recommended for analyzing launch vehicle propulsion systems. I'll be referring to it uh, <clears throat> from time to time. So if we take an example right out of this SPAD book, uh, we have uh, the velocity that's desired, which is the velocity in low Earth orbit, LEO, is 7798, that is 7,798 meters per second. And the velocity gained from the Earth um, <clears throat> is 348 meters per second. We put a negative sign here, uh, meaning that it is removing from our budget the need to supply this much velocity. And by the way, you, if you, for uh, due east, you could actually get a value of minus 409 meters per second. Uh, that's from Cape Canaveral. And so in the Saturn V, apparently, they didn't make perfect use of that, but they got a significant portion of uh, the Earth's velocity or rotation at the latitude of Cape Canaveral. These two numbers are fairly easy to calculate and we'll show how to do that. Uh, the other losses that we talked about are the gravity losses. For the Saturn V it's uh, 1,534 meters per second. The drag only 40 meters per second. This is because the Saturn V uh, had a very high ballistic coefficient. That meant a lot of weight compared to uh, the, uh, the drag on it. Uh, the steering loss was about 243 meters per second. Because these are very hard to calculate, we're going to simply use a process of, of looking them up in uh, the historical data uh, or trying to interpolate between existing vehicles. But these first two are, uh, the velocity to Leo, of course, is the biggest number of all, and uh, we can calculate that easily, and we can also calculate the Earth's contribution. And the others are uh, actually found by simulations where you numerically integrate the, um, <clears throat> the trajectory.